Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that connects you with the best movies to stream, and today we're talking about 20 terrific movies you can catch for free on Tubi. So if you're new to the channel, welcome, but Tubi is one of my favorite free streaming services to recommend. That's right, it's absolutely free. You don't even have to create an account to start watching movies on Tubi, and they've got a much better selection than Netflix does. Yes, you have to watch ads, but they've got great movies like the entire John Wick trilogy, Deadpool, classics like Tombstone. They even have obscure things like the 90s late night hit, The Red Green Show dating myself a little bit with that one. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about some more obscure movies that are excellent watches on Tubi right now. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. I'll be telling you more about them later in the video, but right now we're gonna start this list off with my number 20 pick, Extra Terrestrial. Now this is a low budget alien movie, and those are a dime a dozen, there's a lot of them. They're almost all awful, with extraterrestrial being an exception to that rule. Now again, this wasn't a big theatrical release, there are some budget restraints, but if you like lower budget horror movies, extraterrestrial is one of the best involving aliens I've ever seen. Obviously, there are quite a few things that require some decent special effects, and Extraterrestrial has those, it's got tense moments. Now, this is far from a perfect movie, but I actually never see this one available anywhere, so I'm excited to find out that it's available on Tubi. It's been several years since I've seen it last. My number 19 pick is in a similar budget range, but this one has to do with time travel. It is titled Time Lapse. Now this one involves a time machine, except it's this giant machine. It looks like an early computer or something like that. It takes up half a room. So you don't get in it to travel, rather it takes pictures of the future. And when a couple of young folks discover this thing, they make pretty good use of it. But as you might imagine, things do not work out well for everybody. This is actually a pretty good thriller that has a time machine in it. Feels a lot less like an actual time travel movie though because you're not really traveling in time. Rather, you're able to manipulate time with this device. But again, for a low budget movie, this is really smart and has a lot of clever twists and turns. All right, now my number 18 pick, we will jump to a bigger budget movie. This came out in theaters across the country and kind of flopped and I can kind of see why, but The Condemned still makes a fun watch on Tubi. Released in 2007, The Condemned stars Stone Cold Steve Austin in one of his only big budget movie releases and Vinnie Jones, along with a bunch of other people who are all criminals sent to a death match on an island. I've seen this before, movies like Gamer, Battle Royale, and while The Condemned isn't as good as either of those movies, if you're a fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin, this is easily one of the coolest movies he's done, but even if you're not, it is a fun action movie with a nice hard R edge. Far from perfect, in fact, it got blasted by critics, but it's one of those movies where you turn your brain off late at night and just enjoy the ride. There's a lot of movies on Tubi that fall into that category, the late night half-ass action movie. The Condemned is easily one of the best in that specific category. Now my number 17 pick changes things up quite a bit with a low budget mind bender movie that somehow is packed with some really big stars. Stars like Ryan Reynolds, Melissa McCarthy, Octavia Spencer, and Elle Fanning. And this is easily one of the lower budget movies Ryan Reynolds has ever done, yet it works. In this movie, he plays multiple characters, each with their own life, and things begin to converge in these really bizarre ways. Again, this is a mind bender of a movie. This too, sort of panned by critics, but that always happens with these lower budget efforts. And for someone like me who has seen a ton of movies in this budget range, The Nines actually punches above its weight. Now it does take a while to get where it's going, but there is a big payoff if you can be patient with this one. If you're at least bit interested in sort of a mind bender that involves all all of those folks that I mentioned, then The Nines is a really cool and highly unusual watch. And then we're actually gonna round out my bottom five on this list of 20 movies with a zombie movie from Australia that is a cult classic I have loved for years and I have not seen it on a streaming service in either a long time or maybe ever. This might be the first time I'm mentioning Undead on this channel. 
Now this is the first movie from the Spearig brothers who would go on to do Daybreakers with Ethan Hawke and Predestination with Ethan Hawke, two superior movies. But Undead is a bloodbath of a zombie movie. It actually has a lot in common with Peter Jackson's earlier movies where it's silly but also gross and there's a lot of clever elements to it. But make no bones about it, this is a B-level horror movie. If you typically dig weirder offbeat zombie movies though, Undead is one of the better hidden gems in that category I've ever seen. Now my main goal with this channel is to turn you on to movies you've likely never heard of or would have never discovered otherwise, but I also like to do that with products I particularly enjoy, including today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. If you're like most people and you've been getting your coffee from the grocery store, I highly recommend checking out something different. Trade Coffee is a subscription service that makes it convenient and easy to discover new coffees. And that's because Trade Coffee partners with the nation's top rated independent roasters to send you coffee every month that they know you're gonna love. In fact, they just sent me Oren's special blend. I haven't even opened it yet. So let's go ahead and try it out. Mm. I mean, for someone who really doesn't know anything about coffee, they sent me something that's very, very close to my particular taste. And right now, Trade is offering our viewers a total of $30 off of a subscription, plus access to limited time holiday specials at drinktrade.com slash flick connection. Again, that's drinktrade.com slash flick connection. There is a link in the top of the video description down below. It goes without saying, this would also make a great gift. Not only is it affordable, but it's a great way to introduce yourself or someone else into coffee flavors they would not have discovered otherwise. Making this just a great gift for people who are really into coffee, but also people who don't know much about coffee and just love the taste. So again, save $30 when you go to my link in the video description or just go to drinktrade.com slash flick connection to save that $30 is a fantastic deal. But speaking of fantastic stuff, let's talk about the remaining 15 movies on this list. My number 15 pick is Cheap Thrills and is a wild ride if not a disturbing one. You the one hit one of our girls? No, I swear to God. 500 bucks if you hit him first. I actually love the cast on this one, even though it's a small one, but Pat Healy and Ethan Embry play a couple of friends who get a proposition one night from a wealthy man in a strip club. So already they're going down the wrong track, but it's a man who will pay them decent amounts of money to do awful things. And they're fairly doable things at first, but things escalate when they go back to his house. This is kind of a dark, twisted thriller that does have quite a bit of comedy in it, yet it rides a line. It's hard to call this a dark comedy, but it's also not a totally off-putting, twisted movie. It's somewhere in the middle, and it's kind of wonderful for being neither. If you like dark little indie movies, this is a fantastic one that's sure to make you laugh a few times. It's also gonna make you cringe more than once. My next pick is another wonderful little sci-fi mind bender that actually comes from Australia as well. And even though it's done on a fairly low budget, it looks incredible and is a wild, twisted ride. Other life takes place in a future where virtual reality has evolved. Instead of putting on a mask, it's done with these little black eye drops and immerses you in a very realistic experience. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, they're able to use it in some pretty terrifying ways in this movie as well. Now, this is not a horror movie. It's not gonna scare the crap out of you, but it is kind of a Christopher Nolan-esque sci-fi movie that's done on Again, a fairly low budget, but you can barely tell with this movie. And I will say this used to be on Netflix in the US, it's not anymore. Further proof that Tubi's got a pretty excellent selection compared to Netflix right now. Okay, my number 13 pick is actually a dark comedy that stars Jack Black, and it's based on a true story about a man named Bernie. He was the nicest guy in town. He was about the most popular man in Carthage. Real people, person. Just made you feel real good about yourself. 
It's like he would cast a spell over the entire area. This is from director Richard Linklater, most famous for Dazed and Confused, Boyhood, and the Before Sunrise series. But in this movie, Jack Black plays a man named Bernie who lives in a small Texas town and gets involved in a romantic relationship with a much older woman, played by Shirley MacLaine, and she is a dragon of a woman. Nobody likes her and she is really mean to him until one day he has had enough. That's where the dark element comes in. But because this is Richard Linklater, it's got such an interesting voice. You see so many of the small town's people. Some of them are actual people, not actors. And it brings this incredible flavor to the movie. Matthew McConaughey has a really fantastic role in this as well. And it's a dark comedy that does have some grim moments in it, but for the most part, it leans pretty hard into the comedy. And it might be one of the cheeriest movies I've ever seen that revolves around a murder. And it's mainly because the Bernie character Character is such a likable person and so many of the different townsfolk that get interviewed during the course of the movie are really pleasant and fun to watch as well. Okay, now I already mentioned Peter Jackson's earlier movies, which I absolutely love, movies like Dead Alive, but he did another pseudo-horror movie before he hit it big with Lord of the Rings titled The Frighteners. Not only is this Peter Jackson's last horror movie, but it's also one of Michael J. Fox's final performances. This too is a dark comedy, there's lots of ghosts, and Peter Jackson had a lot of fun with this movie. It's got a lot of comedic elements, but also some pretty great effects, and an overall really fun vibe. Almost kind of a Ghostbusters type of a vibe. This has maintained a bit of a cult following over the years, and yes, some of the effects are pretty dated, but it's still a fun watch that's not too scary. This would have made an excellent Halloween watch, but even so, it's funny enough to watch almost any time of the year. My number 11 pick features some big name stars and easily one of the grossest movies they've ever done. Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker play Repo Men in Repo Men. It's compact, it's safe, it's comfortable. Everything you want in a new liver. The price, $756,000. Now this takes place in a future where everyone seems to have artificial or synthetic organs inside of them, and if you can't pay your bills, the Repo Men come and take them back. I know there's Repo, the genetic opera, which operates on a similar type of a story, but this is kind of a wild sci-fi movie. This too has mixed reviews, but I loved it. I thought it had a killer soundtrack, some really wild moments, but ultimately a cool vibe, a decent story. This is very much outside of what you typically see Jude Law doing. Same goes for Forrest Whitaker. It's kind of an unusual movie for both of them. And I felt like everyone involved with this movie was having fun with it, even though it does have some more serious moments, as well as commentary on kind of where we might be headed technologically. Now, if that's not enough sci-fi for you, I've actually got an anime movie coming up next, and long-time subscribers know I don't recommend them very often, mainly because I don't watch enough to have enough of an opinion on anime, but every now and then, I find one that is incredibly broadly appealing. So even if you've never watched anime whatsoever, I still highly recommend Memories. Now, this is a sci-fi anthology feature film. There are several different stories in this. They're all stunningly animated, and they have interesting concepts. Not one of these felt like something I had seen before, which is why this gets such high praise, and this is something that easily could have worked as live action, but that's part of what's so great about anime films like this, is they're drawn and designed in a way that looks like top-notch filmmaking, and Memories is a fantastic example of that. If you were a sci-fi nut in any way, shape, or form, and you've never seen this gem, definitely make it one of the first things you watch off of this list. Now my number nine pick is sort of a sci-fi fantasy movie done on an incredibly low budget, but almost every single frame of ink is stunning to look at. Now, as you look at some of the footage here, you can't tell it's done on a low budget, but my goodness, did they make great use of every single dollar they spent on this movie. Now, the setup here sounds very much like a children's movie. A young child is sort of whisked away by this, we'll, we'll call it a creature, but there are a few F-bombs and some harsher themes in this movie, making it more like a rated R movie. And I say that because I believe it is unrated. 
So if you have kids, definitely treat this as if it's rated R. But all of the costumes and effects all look like things I've never seen before, which is highly unusual for something done at such a low budget range. If you're the least bit interested, definitely check this one out. If you end up loving it, the creators have another movie called Framed, which is also included with Tubi right now, but I highly recommend checking out Inc. first. Liam Neeson makes this list with one of the more unusual titles he ever worked on, Dark Man. Now this is actually directed by Sam Raimi, who's most famous for the Evil Dead series, and this is based on one of his original short stories. And the idea here is that it's kind of a mixture of classic Universal Pictures monsters like the Invisible Man, Jekyll and Hyde, combined with characters from the DC comic books, characters like the Unknown Soldier and Clayface. Liam Neeson plays a scientist who gets left for dead and then comes back to exact revenge. And it's got some fantastic moments, especially for an action horror flick from 1990. There are some great sequences in this movie and it has maintained cult status for over three decades now. If you've never seen this, Jim, there is a series of them and they're all available on Tubi, but the original is by far the best. My number seven pick though is also directed by Sam Raimi. I did not plan that. I kind of put these lists together without thinking about that, but Drag Me to Hell gets ranked higher than Dark Man and mainly because Sam Raimi is in full force here. Now I would put the Evil Dead series above Drag Me to Hell, but it was the first time he was revisiting the genre after having done the original Spider-Man trilogy. And it was a glorious return to his wild, horror sensibility. This has a lot in common with movies like The Exorcist, but it goes way over the top in Sam Raimi territory and has a lot of moments very similar to moments in The Evil Dead. If you're a fan of the original Evil Dead and somehow you missed Drag Me to Hell, I promise you it holds up as a wild, fun, yet disturbing watch. And then we'll change things up quite a bit with the classic from 1969, Midnight Cowboy. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Now this was nominated for the whole gambit of Academy Awards in 1969, or 1970 rather, but it won for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Writing, arguably three of the more important ones to win. And it's a beautiful movie that has some really funny elements in it as well. And most people remember this movie for Dustin Hoffman's portrayal of Ratso Rizzo, which is a legendary one, but John Boyd playing this pseudo cowboy character who wants to go make a bunch of money being a gigolo in New York is a wonderful way to start this movie because he has no idea what he's doing and it makes for some great sequences and it holds up surprisingly well. I'm not suggesting that movies from 1969 don't hold up, but there's only a handful that hold up as well as Midnight Cowboy making this one of the greatest movies of that year, which is not usually the case. The best picture winner is not often this good of a movie, but man, Midnight Cowboy is a real gem. We'll change things up even further with one of my favorite John Carpenter movies, They Live. Now this one has massive cult status, but pay attention if you've never seen this movie before. This stars Rowdy Roddy Piper as a sunglass wearing, bubblegum chewing badass, and he is on fire in this movie. Even if you were never a fan of his, he is still really fun to watch in this movie. But in this movie, he discovers these special sunglasses that when he puts them on, he can see the actual messages behind all of the marketing, and he can see that some people are not human. So the metaphor here is on the nose, but in the best way possible. And this movie is filled with amazing moments. This one happens to be my personal favorite. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Now another wild, violent, over the top movie that just has an incredible sensibility to it is Brawl in Cell Block 99. Now I have recently recommended Craig Z. Zoller's other films, Bone Tomahawk and Dragged Across Concrete here on the channel, but 
Brawl in Cell Block 99 is my personal favorite of his and it's hiding out for free on Tubi. In this movie, Vince Vaughn plays a hardened criminal who becomes this drug runner and he gets put in the slammer. Now, the movie itself does have kind of a slow pace for the first half, but it's got this cool retro vibe and Vince Vaughn's character and some of the writing is all just really excellent and keeps things moving. But halfway through the movie, something changes and it becomes an entirely different kind of movie and I absolutely love it for that. Not only is it violent and wild and over the top, it manages to top itself every few minutes and again, the best way possible. Even though things do not feel realistic by the time you get to the end of this movie, you're not going to care. This doesn't feel exactly like Tarantino. He's not ripping him off, yet it feels fresh in the way that Tarantino movies did when they first came out. So if you're a fan of that, you definitely have to check out Brawl and Cell Block 99. You have to. But speaking of Tarantino, the double feature he did with Robert Rodriguez is also free to watch on Tubi right now. That includes Death Proof by Tarantino and Planet Terror by Rodriguez. Now, I love Death Proof, but I will say it's one of my least favorite Tarantino movies. It takes quite a while getting in, but once the action pops off, not only does it really pop off, but it's all real stunt work. They're not faking anything here, and it is a wild ride. I particularly love that the stunt work is real, and you get this real maniacal role from Kurt Russell. What's not to love? It just is maybe a little talky in the first half. But I love, and I mean love, Planet Terror. This movie is so over the top and on the nose at the same time, and again, the best way possible in both of those categories. It never forgets to be entertaining and to have fun with the genre. In fact, I would say that Planet Terror and Undead, one of my earlier recommendations on this list, would make a fantastic double feature on Tubi right now. One of my favorite indie films of all time is included for free on Tubi right now, Buffalo 66. Okay, let's look like we like each other and span time and do not touch me, okay? Do not touch me. Okay. Released in 1998, this is written and directed by Vincent Gallo and is held up by many as a masterpiece. He would go on to do a couple other movies that all flopped. In fact, people hated them, including critics, but Buffalo 66 is not only entertaining, it is just perfectly threaded together. Now, he plays a man recently released from prison who then kidnaps Christina Ricci so that he has a girl to bring home to show his parents. Mickey Rourke has a great short little role in here. Ben Gazzara plays the father in one of his greatest performances of all time. And Angelica Houston plays the mother in one of her funniest performances of all time. This is a weird movie that somehow connects with people in a really beautiful way. You do have to be patient with this movie, but if you tend to like really well-crafted indie flicks, Buffalo 66, again, is a masterpiece, if not near perfect, but you've gotta wait to the final moments of the movie for the ultimate payoff. Hopefully you end up loving it as much as I have over the years. And then my number one pick is a German film that you are gonna have to read subtitles before, but man, is it maybe the greatest German war film ever made, Das Boot. If this isn't the greatest German war movie ever made, it's certainly the greatest submarine movie ever put to film, above Hunt for Red October, above Crimson Tide, this is the best. Not only is it a great movie with a fantastic story, amazing performances, and a top-notch production value, but the way that they cram you into the submarine in this movie is absolutely brilliant. You feel claustrophobic. You feel like you're underwater, crammed in to this small submarine with these German officers, all the effects are top-notch. They all look realistic. It feels like everything's really happening. It is a wild, intense ride, and it's a bit of a long one, too. It's two and a half hours, but again, it's absolutely stunning. It is required viewing if you consider yourself a movie buff. And again, it's free on Tubi. You don't even have to sign up to start watching all the movies that I just listed. It is worth noting, the availability is based on U.S. regions, and it will differ depending on where you are in the world, but 
in the top pinned comment down below, I've listed where most of these movies are available in Europe, Australia, and Canada. So be sure to check out that top pinned comment down below. But thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. And I will keep making these as long as you keep watching them. But thanks for checking out this special Tubi episode. And you will see me on the next one.